With this session update, I'm Shannon Lurkey. Senate Republicans called a press conference to promote their proposal for how law enforcement support from outside communities could be funded in the event of future civil unrest. Here's that press conference. Well, good morning. Uh, welcome to the, another Minnesota winter snowstorm. Uh, it's about time we had one. So thank you for being here. Uh, as we start, I do want to talk about uh, a video that I just uh, watched that the governor had talked about this very issue that we're going to talk about today. And when people from rural Minnesota disagree about funding uh, the police in Minneapolis, uh, I, I was very surprised and disappointed that the governor called that uh, a cancer in our country when people disagree about things like this. I just think that's how you bring division. Uh, it's not one liberal Minnesota, which is one side of the coin. Minnesota is like a coin. The fact that we're, how, how do we come together? It's frankly Republicans and Democrats. It's rural, it's metro, it's suburban, but it's two sides of a coin. And, and when you say something like that, Governor, it absolutely is divisive. So as we talk about what we're going to do today, uh, we're going to address it and why we are uh, releasing the position that, that we are. Two issues that we're looking at. Number one, everyone deserves safe streets. Everyone. Minneapolis, St. Paul, everywhere in Minnesota, Duluth, Baudette, everywhere. All of the, the people that live in those cities and communities want their streets safe. And so that's a goal that we should all have. Uh, but also, uh, we, we're, the other issue we're looking at is Minneapolis cut a over a hundred police officers within the last few months uh, knowing or at least having knowledge that a year ago the police in, in Minneapolis said they needed 400 more. So rather than going up, they're reducing their budget $8 million by cutting more than a hundred police and now they come to Minnesota with this request. So the governor's requesting $35 million to fund safe streets for, for fut future riots. And think about that. Uh, first of all, we don't know that there's future riots. We know that there's events coming up, but here's three things that we should think about and that the governor should think about. Number one, there's no, why not avoid future riots? Why not reach out to the communities and build the bridges necessary to stop future riots with all the destruction? So yes, there are events that are going to happen, but, but we need to be more proactive in building relationships with those communities to stop the thought, the thought that there's going to be future riots. So outreach is really important. I don't know what the governor's doing. I can tell you that I have reached out to some people uh, to try to listen to what they're doing to not have future riots. That's working together. So all violence should be considered unacceptable. Any violence in Minneapolis, any violence in Washington, D.C., I think we all can work together to build that, that idea that we, we are all opposed to violence. Number two, Minneapolis should be expected to have adequate police. I don't think that's asking too much that uh, when they cut over 100 police officers that they need to first be responsible to make sure that they have an adequate police force. And number three, Minneapolis needs to pay for the needed help of mutual aid when they need it. Too many communities did not get paid when they came to Minneapolis aid throughout the summer. Think about that. They came, they should have got paid, they had mutual aid agreements, and they did not get paid by the city of Minneapolis. That's wrong. <laughs> Minneapolis needs to make sure that they take care of their bills. So now we have the problem in Minneapolis that they don't want to, or there are many, many communities that are not uh, uh, sign it up to uh, the local, uh, what do they call them? Uh, mutual aid agreements, sorry about that. They're not signing those. And so that's the question is why? Why are they not signing those? Well, number one, they didn't get paid. But number two, I've talked to some of those, those folks in different parts of the state. They're frustrated that they have such a disrespect for their work as police officers. So we can change these things. But part of this responsibility has to be laid on the, the Minneapolis City Council. So we want to help the people of Minneapolis. We want to make sure those small businesses are protected. We want to make sure that the people in the communities that they feel safe. But we've got some, some concerns that we're laying out to you. And because of that, that is why you're going to see the approach that we're going to do. So Senator Bill Weber has got a, a great plan that reflects all of the things I just talked about. Thank you, Senator Gazelka, and good morning, everyone. 
We are waiting for a bill to be jacketed at the revisor's office, so I can't give you a specific Senate file number yet at this point. But the bill is fairly short and simple, and what it actually does is that if a community uh, who receives local government aid fails to reimburse another local unit of government that uh, has not, uh, that has provided uh, service, law enforcement service through a mutual aid agreement, uh, that basically upon proper application and certification, the city may withhold the local government aid in the amount that the city owes to the fellow uh, local government unit and uh, increase that unit's uh, local government aid or if they don't receive it, send them a check. Uh, this uh, takes care of the issue about the uh, concern of local government units about whether they will be reimbursed for the service that they provide. And we quite frankly feel that this is proper and acceptable. Local government aid is a, an issue that is very dear to me. I served 16 years in a local government capacity as councilman and mayor. And the reality of it is, is that local government aid is an effort to provide basic services to our communities who, between population and property wealth, sometimes don't have the right mix, the right balance to be able to afford the things that they need to provide to their citizens. Chief and foremost in that is protection. I think that that is the primary purpose of every governmental unit, is to provide protection to its citizens. And quite frankly, if there is a local unit of government or any other unit of government that is failing to provide that protection, we need to stand up, we need to say so, and we need to take steps to ensure that that protection is available. I want to comment uh, briefly on a letter uh, that was sent to the Minnesota House of Representatives Public Safety and Criminal Justice Reform Finance and Policy Division from the Minnesota Law Enforcement Coalition. The final paragraph of that letter states, and after they gave an obligatory thank you to the governor for providing money for his safe aid, uh, state aid for emergencies or safe initiative. Our members remain concerned, however, that no matter what legislation is passed, the response for mutual aid will not be as robust as the public may expect. Our members' concern is due to the continued demonization of law enforcement officers by certain public officials at various levels of government. It seems to me rather strange that a city council can demonize, as the letter states, their police officers and then afterwards complain about the rise in crime that they're experiencing within their community. And so as we look at that situation develop, uh, it is imperative that uh, they are prepared in case events do unfold, that we hope they don't, but events do unfold that take a violent turn. Uh, this is the, an effort that we have made in place of the governor's $35 million request to ensure that those entities that provide or respond in mutual aid will indeed be reimbursed for the effort that they put forth. And so uh, at this point, uh, we'll certainly take questions. Um, you guys, uh, Senator Gazelka, uh, last month or in December, you sent a letter to the governor asking for $7.6 million to offset um, expenses from Minneapolis for mutual aid. How does this square with you saying that you now don't support the idea of reimbursement? This was a letter you sent to the governor. Well, the point is uh, the city of Minneapolis had, had cut $8 million of their public safety, uh, removing over 100 police officers. And so what we're doing here is simply saying that their local government aid is first responsible to make sure that they have a, uh, adequate public safety so that if other communities are coming to help, uh, and they send out a bill that uh, that's, there's an expectation that will get paid because they have not been paying their bills. And I think you all know that the governor has at his fingertips the ability to have the highway patrol and the National Guard to come in. So this is like a fourth layer. You have the police and then those two levels and then the mutual aid agreement. So there, the, we're not worried about having adequate uh, security there because I think we all agree that we want to make sure the, the streets are safe and those small businesses are protected. Uh, but at the same time, Minneapolis, is, it needs to pay their bills. There's just no excuse for not doing that. Well, I, I'm just to clarify that this letter looks like you're asking the state 
to pay Minneapolis's bill for $7.6 million to reimburse those who came to the aid this summer. Am I misreading this? Uh, could you repeat it again? This letter looks like you were asking the governor to have the state pay Minneapolis's bill to the tune of $7.6 million for Operation Safety Net. Well, I, I will say that we are frustrated with the city of Minneapolis not paying their bills to these other communities that sent their people, that used up all of their supplies, and that for sure we're going to protect those, those communities that aren't getting paid. I think the direction we're moving is much clearer in that it's Minneapolis's responsibility, and so uh, if that's a nuance of a change, uh, then that would be accurate. So. Senator, if I could do a follow-up. So just to be crystal clear, so you're saying that that $7.6 million that you requested was not a bailout, but the, but the $35 million that the governor is not requesting, you do characterize that as a bailout? How, how do they differentiate it, if you could clarify? We're not doing either. Our, this proposal basically says that that the city of Minneapolis, if they're not paying their bills, that we would we can use their local government, government aid to pay the bills that they're responsible to pay. Would that be accurate? I would also wish to add that it, in the governor's letter to Senator Gazelka, as I recall, uh, he indicated that the cost to Minneapolis would be $7.6 million. They cut $8 million. So they defunded their police by $8 million. Quite frankly, if they had not defunded their police, they'd have the money that they need to cover that expense. And so um, I think that uh, for him now to raise that total to 35 million to try and cover the state, uh, I think is uh, really an overreach on, on the governor's part, to be honest about it. Uh, and I think, quite frankly, that we all know when state money is, is included, uh, there's always a whole realm of new rules, requirements, and what have you. I I think most communities in Minnesota are very prepared and capable of taking care of themselves, working with one another to take care of their needs, and, um, and I don't think that uh, they quite frankly uh, expect the state to come in and uh, take care of that for them. But the fund, the establishment of the fund, the idea is that it's not all going to be necessarily spent ahead of these trials, that it's there as effectively a safety net, and that greater Minnesota cities in the event of emergency could use it too. So with that in mind, um, you know, does that at all change this idea that $35 million is all going to, quote, bail out Minneapolis? No, it does not change my mind. And I speak as an outstate senator. Can I just follow well, up? On no, I'll follow up on okay. that too, because uh, if the National Guard has an expense or if the Highway Patrol has an expense, that's a state level expense. Uh, and so we, we recognize that. We recognize, as I mentioned in the beginning, that we want to make sure everybody is safe in the streets. Uh, but we also recognize that the city of Minneapolis, the city council, is not doing their part. And that's why we're going this direction. The rest of it, you know, the layers that are there for protection are going to be there. I talked to some uh, other community uh, or police in other communities, and they said, look, if it comes right down to it, we are going to be there, even though we are very frustrated with the city of Minneapolis and their attitude towards police. And yet they know that uh, protecting the streets is important for all of us. But just to be clear, this, this bill would create language that would say, if Minneapolis won't reimburse these cities, we can force them at, like, at the state level. We can take that money from the local government and pay their bills. That is correct, because local government aid is first and foremost about public safety, and, and they have decreased their buzz, budget related to that, re related to local government aid, and then not paying their bills. And that's totally unacceptable for any community. I think as a mayor, you would have said the same thing, that, uh, you know, it's just, it's unacceptable, and it's... Uh, I'm surprised that they're doing it, and we're just going to help them do the right thing. So yeah. just to clarify, because the social unrest and the costs resulting from that, your caucus has not necessarily wanted money from the disaster relief account to cover some of that. So if Walls is setting this fund up to pay for social unrest, it, it's sort of like two different categories. Do I have that right? And then if, if not, then how should social unrest be covered in the future? 
So the question is how should social uh, unrest be paid if we don't set up a fund like this? I, I think part of the reason, uh, the fact that the, the governor raided the disaster relief fund, it was meant for floods and things of that nature. We built up the fund for those reasons and then he unilaterally raided, raided that, uh, caused us to be more thoughtful about what kind of pots of money we're, are we gonna create that the governor uses however he thinks they should be used. And so we're not gonna create another $35 million fund. Uh, we recognize that there can be bills uh, or can be expenses that would come Minnesota's way. That would be National Guard, Highway Patrol, et cetera. But we do think we've set in place uh, with this bill uh, the responsibility of the city of Minneapolis to make sure they're taking care of their adequate security. I mean, think about crime that has, has dramatically grown in Minneapolis and St. Paul and across the country. Uh, as a result of the inaction over the first number of days of the riots. And so we, we do have an ability to change. We're asking Minneapolis to join us in doing their part. Another um, issue or, or a topic that was raised by the governor and John Harrington yesterday was that the, the protests in wake of George Floyd, they weren't just in Minneapolis. They weren't just in the cities. They were in cities across the state of Minnesota and they needed to dispatch additional help there too. So with that in mind, again, the, the, what, what's your response to, to the notion that it's not just the city of Minneapolis that might call in mutual aid or need mutual aid in, in light of these trials and that this fund, the governor's argument is, will benefit all of those cities should they need help, especially smaller cities that you know, or, or, or small departments with, with less money, mm -hmm. perhaps. So you have to ask the question why all these uh, communities around the state do not want to enter into those mutual aid agreements with Minneapolis. I mean, it tells you that there's something different going on in Minneapolis. Uh, it's certainly, Bemidji, uh, other, what do you know, there were other places where there were some smaller um, protests, uh, but there was a much more organization, much more community support for their police, and the, the results were much, much smaller. And so I think the main focus that we're focused on, even though the bill will be towards anyone, is recognizing that Minneapolis cut over 100 police and $8 million out of their budget for public safety, and then they're not paying their bills to all of those other communities that came to help, and that's just never right. Uh, but we also, you know, I want to recognize that we have the National Guard and the Highway Patrol that can also help, and those are state responsibilities. Yep. Let's assume for the sake of argument that everyone's numbers are correct, that when Harrington says it's going to cost about $35 million to secure Minneapolis for the uh, Derek Chauvin trial, and that Minneapolis decreased police funding by $8 million, that leaves uh, a $27 million difference. Would you be willing to increase Minneapolis's LGA by that amount so they have the money available? In other words, you might just be robbing Peter to pay Paul, but the result could be the same. Well, the question is, would we be interested in uh, increasing Minneapolis local government aid, 27 million? The answer is no. Uh, we're, I think we should aim to have no riots. I think we should be reaching out to all the different community members that have influence and say, do we really think destroying 1,500 buildings was the right direction? Do we really think tearing down statutes and burning third precincts is the right direction? We can all condemn that together. We can all uh, be much more forceful. Once uh, we were into about four days of the five days of the riots and there finally was a adequate response, we gained control. Well, now I would say that the governor has made better decisions in the last number of months over possible scenarios uh, where they adequately in, uh, ramped up so that there was nothing. And, and that is my hope going forward, that we have that, that same kind of an attitude and effort so there aren't gonna be the destructions that there was uh, in the early, year, or early months. Well, just to be clear, that, that is what uh, Commissioner Harrington said that this money would be for, to prevent riots by flooding the zone with cops. I imagine he's envisioning something like we've seen at the Super Bowl or the Republican National Convention, where a, a security presence is such that uh, groups that just wanna yell can yell, but groups that actually wanna destroy things are, are, are unable to. So th that, that is what he s says the money is for. Well, as I mentioned, as the governor raided the, uh, one of our disaster relief funds and used it for things that we didn't think he should, we feel like he's been doing that as a course of action where he's left us out. And it, it, we feel like it's much, much better to be proactive about uh, avoiding the riots if they do occur, 
uh, and there are expenses, then certainly uh, we have been very open to making sure that the Highway Patrol and the National Guard are fully funded. Uh, we also want to make sure, frankly, that these local governments that have come are also paid for, and we think that's a Minneapolis responsibility. I've got a follow-up from Jesse Van Burkle on that point. Senator Gazelka, what would be your plan for outreach in the next month or so to prevent unrest? And, and you know what, I laid that out. Uh, number one, where is the outreach to these communities? Uh, I know that uh, community policing, for example, in St. Cloud that has uh, a number of minority populations, they have worked together with the police and the city uh, administration, and they have avoided serious uh, riots because they were working together. So where is the outreach? Uh, so instead of inflaming it about being anti-police and the police are terrible and the police aren't doing their job, where is that outreach that how do we work together? The, the people I talked to did not want to defund the police. They thought it was important to have the police there and working with the police and then dealing with that bad apple when, the, when it rises up. And so outreach is really, really important as we're moving forward. And then, you know, as far as how we're going to release it, you know, the governor does have the authority and can make the judgment when Highway Patrol, when National Guard need to be there. And, and uh, I think he needs to do that part as well. Yep. The uh, House DFL has already gone forward and it's starting advancing the $35 million fund. This is another proposal to counteract that. Obviously, you guys are going to have to come to some sort of agreement on this, and um, so you might have to, you know, relinquish some of what you would like to see. They might have to relinquish what, some of what they might want to see. So, um, I guess, is it a non-starter for you to have any sort of additional funding element like to, to, to prevent this from happening, like a number lower than $35 million potentially. So we need to balance the overall budget, and public safety is one of those things, but there's also education and health and human services and how that all fits together. Uh, we, don't, we don't believe that we need to advance funds for something that may or may not happen. Uh, we are committed to making sure that those that have done the work of protecting our streets are paid for it. So, but to, if there's no agreement, it moves forward as it always has been, which means the governor can uh, bring in sources to stop uh, riots, and there is a cost to that, and then we have to uh, address paying for that cost. If, if I may just follow up to that, um, the, the may or may not happen. Um, Commissioner Harrington said yesterday, you know, we don't have to look very far back in history to see what these types of trials generate in Baltimore, in LA. Um, so many of these high profile situations have caused unrest, so is it really very uh, far-sighted to say that this might not happen when we have the context that we have, and with that in mind, isn't it prudent to try to be preventative in preventing that from, you know, happening? I don't think that we should assume that it's a foregone conclusion that people will riot. Uh, that doesn't mean that uh, you don't think about it and that you talk about what are you going to do and when. And I would say, as I mentioned, uh, I think uh, after the first month or two of the riots, I felt like the, the governor made quicker and better decisions and, and the results were, were much, much better. And so uh, we already know what to do. Uh, and it's just a matter of are we going to create a pot of money now or what do we, or can we pay for it later? But the underlying thing that we are talking about is when the city of Minneapolis has a very negative attitude towards police, all of the city council wanting to defund them, and then literally cutting over 100 police officers, and then now asking the state for help. That's where the real difficulty is for people. Uh, these, all of these mutual aid agreements across the whole state, nobody wanting to sign an agreement with the city of Minneapolis tells you that we have a problem there uh, that's, it's, that's in addition to making sure that the streets are safe. Can I uh, push back a little bit on the, on the, the notion of outreach? Um, the, the idea isn't that the violence, the, the, the dangerous violence, would necessarily be caused by local groups. Uh, let's take an analogy. There's no question there was local violence in the summer riots. There were local people in Minneapolis and St. Paul who caused violence. But the idea of saying that this is a national event, I think, is the, is the concern. It's got that kind of a profile. Yeah. It would be sort of like saying, well, the D.C. police should have done outreach before the storm the Capitol, at which 
A small group of those who gathered caused violence, but that, that violence was high profile and high in impact. And so isn't that an argument that, look, outreach is well and good, and Commissioner Harrington has said he, he met yesterday with black churches, but we're talking about people coming in from outside the community because this is a, a flashpoint, and th there's no outreach that we can do locally on that. So what is your question? Is what do you do you not believe that? I mean, how do you do outreach against national Antifa forces that want to come in and burn down Minneapolis? Yeah, I mean, out, outreach is part of it. That was, uh, I also said that we, and the governor does have at his fingertips the National Guard and, and the Highway Patrol, that when they were brought in in full force, things immediately changed. That, that's my point, is, is I, think we, I think he knows now what, what he should have known in the beginning, that you've got to match that with a greater force than what's there. And so, so we can figure out how to work together for any bills that might come from that. That is not a problem. It's something I think we all support. What I don't think we all support and what we're underlying is that the city of Minneapolis needs to, to make sure that they have an adequate police force, that they've gone the opposite direction, and they have, have a very poor attitude about police, and that is creating a problem with people wanting to help them across the state. I've got, I've got two questions from reporters not in the room, so I want to be sure we get to them. Um, from Dana Ferguson, and maybe this is better for Senator Weber, are, are you worried that you are asking Minneapolis to pull from a fund that is already used to pay for police and fire services? that uh, <clears throat> local government aid is to be used for, for protection. And so, uh, quite frankly, uh, pulling from their local government aid to pay their bills for protection is, is simply a cost that they should be incurring right now. And then from Brian Bax, what if a county or the state makes the mutual aid request? Does your bill do anything? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't catch. What if the county or the state makes the, aid, makes the mutual aid request that goes unpaid? Well, I think that, you know, mutual aid requests will be dealt with individually when they are made. Um, you know, in, in many instances, there, there usually is an agreement and everything has to be outlined within that agreement. Uh, you know, if there is a, if there is a major problem, uh, I'm sure their request will go out and then it's the up to the local units of government uh, to decide uh, whether they're going to respond or not. And so we can't necessarily control that. Senator Davis, did you want to make some comments? Yes. Okay. Maybe I'll make some closing comments then. Uh, we, we absolutely want to work with the governor as far as the, the goal to make sure Minnesota streets are safe, uh, that everyone across the state, including Minneapolis, that the people, their neighborhoods, they feel safe, that those small businesses that were destroyed or damaged, that they feel like uh, we're protecting them that they, and that they're safe. So that, that I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. We just want to make sure that Minneapolis changes their tune, uh, that they would hire back police uh, so that they would actually do the part that they're supposed to do as we're dealing with these serious issues. Thank you. To continue following these issues and more, watch legislative coverage Monday through Friday on the PBS Minnesota channel or visit our website, www.senate.mn/media.